feel like I have to reintroduce myself, you know, because this this album it's it's the first um, at least it's the first one of its kind under my own name. Charlotte Wessels, live from the, I should say, six feet underwater uh, studios. Um, what, the, are you okay? Like, uh, there, you had some setbacks, uh, as I uh, was told. Yeah, we had some setbacks recently. Let's see if you can still, well, you can't really see it from that this distance, but uh, we had some water damage in the studio. That's why it's quite a mess and why I have the screen up behind me. Um, I still have to get it fixed. Um, I thought that it had to do with the fact that we have uh, we have like historically high water levels in the Netherlands. A few okay. weeks ago, like everyone in the street had like water in the crawling spaces under their houses, and at that exact moment, uh, I saw water damage on the wall of the Six Feet Under studio, which is you know where all my gear is, so it was scary. Um, and I thought it was related to the high water levels because you know one on one is two. Like all of my neighbors have water down there um and uh I, i've got a very uh, handy uh, uh dad so at one point he came over and he looked at it and it was like huh and i was like what kind of huh is that <laughs> and he said well it, it's kind of a um uh, a coincidence that you know the water damage is straight where the pipes from your uh, uh kitchen draining is so in the end um, even though it was like at the exact moment that we had the highest water levels ever and it had nothing to do with that yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's actually better damage to have because uh, we could just close down a pipe and now it doesn't get worse and it is good to know that our basement is in fact waterproof there you go there yeah go. so it was almost a matter of we have to knock down like half of the wall to see where there's a crack in the wall but there there is no crack in the wall it's just our kitchen <laughs> all right all right that kind of um looking at it from uh, a positive angle because you said you know it's the better kind of damage it's um, the better kind of damage yeah exactly exactly <laughs> is that you know is that something that was always sort of in you or now that you've been a studio owner as well and you've had to deal with falling walls like the one behind you and uh yeah. if i remember correctly red dye all over your kitchen when you try to you know recolor a wig those kind of things happen all the time um is is that something that grew with you that you are able to look the positive into these things uh i can uh don't talk to my husband about it <laughs> <laughs> No, he's also very optimistic. No, definitely. Um, it's, uh, uh, but yeah, the, these things will always happen and they will always happen at the, at the least convenient time. So, you know, especially when it's something like water damage, where I don't feel like it's something that I necessarily did to cause it. It's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, awesome. what you gonna do? Like the stains in the kitchen were very much my fault. That's on me. <laughs> <laughs> A key thing that, 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 that happened is you've relaunched your Patreon and there's a lot of things moving and they're all connected. Um, you, you, you've shared in a, in a, in a video that the, one of the key reasons that you're relaunching the Patreon that you're trying to, you know, bring it to the next level is because you also have plans to, I think I quote you rewrite and rearrange all of the stuff you've done with a full band. Tell us more about this. Yeah. What is going on? <clears throat> So it's not, um, uh, so there, there were a lot of uh, reasons to do a Patreon relaunch. Uh, and one of them was the fact that I basically had not changed. Like I started the Patreon when, uh, when no one had heard of COVID yet, when I was still in delaying, like it was, uh, it was a different world in entirely. And I have never kind of re uh, examined like the tears and the benefits to, um, how life developed and what I'm doing yeah, now. Yeah. So, uh, and actually, uh, I remember six months into Patreon, I was like, I should do a relaunch at one point. And I kind of kept pushing it forward because it's kind of daunting, you know, change, yeah, yeah. Think, change is scary. 
so I've been putting it off for a very long time, but now that we're working towards uh, the new album, I felt like it's it's now or never. Um, um, so I'm very glad that I did because now it's actually very much crunch time for the album. So I don't think that I, I could have uh, done something like that because it took a lot of preparations right. uh, in the upcoming months. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, the album definitely had to do with it. Um, uh, like there were a lot of different reasons to um, to to change the Patreon to make it more sustainable for me, uh, to make to make it to make the reward something that I can continue to do, uh, and to hopefully make it more fun for people as well, uh, to take them along in the process of making the new album. And the rewriting and rearranging, um, I've heard some people, uh, I, I think that some people considered that to be um, uh, thinking that I was going to kind of rewrite and rearrange the songs of Tales Volume 1 and 2, like the previous records. Uh, actually, that's only, I'm going to do that for one of them. Okay. But the rest will be, uh, will just be new songs that have only been uh like i do share my progress on the songs with the patrons like i still give them a song of the month every month but to everyone who's not a patron these will be brand new songs i've heard a lot of people say oh so you're just going to do those again right 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 um, that is not the rewriting and, and rearrangement that is more compared to compared to how i did it on tales from six feet under volume one and two which were like the albums that i made during the pandemic in the basement alone which were made like very spontaneous and all within like a very short time frame. Um, I basically, I wrote them, recorded them and published them. And that was it, you know, there was not a like, let this rest for a few weeks and then see how you feel about it. See if you can improve this, see if you can improve that. There wasn't even a, let's replace, you know, this, um, this uh, plugin with like an actual human playing something. It was just very much, um, yeah, very much, a spontaneous, almost frantic way of, I have all of these feelings. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Take them. <Yeah>, yeah. <laughs> Do you know from what we've seen with your previous albums that songs that are shared as a yeah. song of the month with your patrons and then the versions that end up on the album can also evolve quite a bit? Um, you know, an example of that would be the, you know, the very first time you shared, I think, Aftikin was very much just you on on uh, singing over an electro beat. And then we eventually got like something that was quite epic. Um, so uh, even though patrons have heard some of these songs already, you've shared also some singles. Um, what should we expect from the album Musical Direction? Because we also know who you brought on board on this yeah. journey, which comes with expectations we've seen yeah. you play live as well um we've heard some heavier songs from you yeah. as well uh, in the second half of your solo stuff um what should we expect well i think it's interesting that you mentioned off kick and because that one for example uh i did not change anything from the first version on uh that i put on patreon to the live version like the only thing that has changed is that the feeling of having the live band there uh, mm -hmm. and and having them actually be, be performed rather than having the uh the plug-in guitars and the plug-in drums um you know as decent as these can be these days uh people experience it as a lot heavier okay. uh so it's, it's interesting that that you mentioned that one because actually nothing has changed uh yeah, except yeah, yeah. for the fact that we performed it live with the band and that that made it feel very different like response yeah. that we had uh, gotten after doing the first live gig with the material kind of unaltered from tales from uh six feet under volume one and two is like people say oh this is actually this is this is heavier than i expected it to be so that is kind of um that is kind of an uh an effect that um bringing the band in has um has either way um but in terms of like musical direction um i also think that this will this this album will be more cohesive like i've i've spent a lot of time like when i started the patreon it was very much just to have the freedom to do anything other than you know, it was intended to be like a side project from the band. So basically a place for everything other than like the direction that I was working on back then. 
And of course, over the years that has changed. So um, in the beginning, it was purely like the weird electronic or the pop songs and, and whatever symphonic metal songs I had, I would keep in, in the very beginning for like, for when we'd work on the new album with Delane and then slowly but steadily uh as i didn't have to do that anymore like those songs also make made it to patreon like you have songs like um human to ruin or phantom touch or like the heavier songs on tales tales one and two um and now i think after tales from uh, six feet under volume two I, I really started thinking more in I want to write an album instead of I just want to put something out every month. So right. I, I've started to really uh, be more considerate of, you know, is this, is this kind of the direction that I want to take um, and, and will there be some sort of cohesion? Um, and it is heavier like i noticed i really enjoyed having the opportunity to kind of spread my wings creatively and be doing doing like polar opposite songs uh one month after another like that was a lot of fun but at this moment i'm also just enjoying like really looking for um yeah the songs that give me most joy and i do notice that those those are the heavier songs like that is very much in yeah. my in my dna that's where i come from that's what i always did and in the end, that's kind of where I feel um, uh, most comfortable. Uh, and yeah, now that I'm working with the band, it is, it's insane to see how the songs uh, improve and develop, like from their first version that was, you know, maybe a Patreon song of the month. Um, what I've been doing is then, you know, I let it rest for a while and then I look over it again. I, I restructure some things, rearrange some things. I send it over to Timo. Uh, he made then the kind of the pre-production for going into the studio for the drums, also with Joey at some points. Now we have recorded for 10, 12, 12 songs. Um, the drums and... Um, then we're going uh yeah now so guitars and drums are being tracked so there is there is so much happening and there's so much so much um yeah the songs are really improving a lot during the process Yeah, so the, the best part is really being uh, being in the studio together and working on the songs together. There is so much enthusiast, uh, enthusiasm about the, the material and, uh, you know, um, the guys and girl, like everyone is just very, very talented and it, uh, yeah. it, it makes it makes uh, a huge difference and a difference. And I'm really seeing the songs um, come to life and, and kind of grow in what I would hope that they could be, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, which is so rewarding and also just so much fun. Mariana, Mariana so, so it's interesting, uh, Charlotte, that you say how like people tell you like, oh, yeah, like, you know, now the songs sound so much heavier. And maybe that's just the collective projection of us, the fans that know you from your metal time who still believe that you can take Charlotte out of metal, but you can't take metal out of Charlotte. Um, because you say like, well, African didn't really change that much. But there are examples of songs that have changed um, with the previous albums that you put out. But with this cycle, um, like, are there examples of songs that you put out in a certain way that the patrons gave you, you know, feedback on that they might be quite surprised when they hear the final version? Yeah, uh, there's going to be way more surprises. Like uh, on some songs which are already close to their um, are representative of what I want on the album, it is it will be a matter of you know. Uh, the riffs will be heavier, um, uh, you know, Timo and Joey and Otto will work their wonders on that. Um, <clears throat> uh, and like the real piano parts will be uh, performed by Sophia, who is a classical, you know, she's a educated pianist. So <laughs> that will be, that will be um, 
much more feeling in that and as well i'm also working with uh vikram vikram shankar for um some additional arrangements uh so he's been working on you know adding extra flourish to like the orchestrations um so i've actually shown um patrons uh two weeks ago during a hangout uh, like a little bit of a new part of a song that they already know they were they were very excited about just how how um how much it's come to life mm -hmm. and this is on the song that already had you know a proper arrangement and that were already like band songs but um digitally but there's also songs for example that i've put on the patreon and on the patreon it was just my voice and a harp that was the only thing that was there uh, and we're turning this into a full band song. So um, so there will be a lot more change. It will be going in a lot more phases. And whereas at first I was kind of having like a bird's eye view over the songs, like everyone's now in going, going uh, into depth on these songs. Um, and one thing that we're doing, which which I, which is really new to me, and which I think is also really 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 benefits the song and and like the production as a whole, is uh, we started doing the drum recordings, uh, and at that point we only recorded the drums, but we had the entire band there, so you know everyone played along during those recordings. So we we really we really tested the arrangement and see how you know all the parts work together. And one thing that we're not going to do is like edit now now that it's recorded like edit it fully to the grid like we're all going to work based on that so it's going to be it's going to be a very um it's going to be quite an organic sound you know it's not going to be like trigger drums etc it's going to be um yeah it's going to be really lively and there will be a lot of uh space for like everyone's individual talents um to shine which is something that i'm very excited about because you know if you have uh people in the studio with you who are like so talented you want to actually yeah you want to be able to 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 use that to the song's advantage and uh, in this way we we can really do that um and another thing that i'm also going to do is uh because for also the last delane albums but also the like the two tales albums i uh recorded my um my vocals just here uh well not here for the first ones because i was living in another house but uh, i recorded them alone at home and i you know i also edited them and um uh but for this album i also thought that it would be good to know uh, have an extra set of ears there and you know someone who could really listen closely to like the vocal arrangements with me and um i've worked a lot with uh, oliver phillips uh both for delane and for phantasma and um i'm going to do the vocal recordings with him which uh, also we did we did only one song now to try it out i do it here and he's in germany so we have a we have a connection with software which i thought would be really weird but normally when i record it with him i was also in another room in a closet so right. it's kind of the same you know you just hear each other over your ears but that's the way it always was so uh so that's also that's also really great so then i can just just focus on the singing instead of you know wearing different hats and being on top of like um uh, the files as well so um yeah there's really going more effort in at um at all fronts uh which which i'm really excited about and we got kind of one more i've got one more kind of bo because we have we have like 12 songs now maybe 13 14 if i um finish some other ones um before the last block of drum recordings but i'm also going i'm going on a artist residency in poland in um halfway february so i'm still thinking now that i know kind of how the songs are now that i know how the songs have de developed from where they were back in uh back in the first patreon version now now that i have more of an idea of okay these are the key songs on the album and and this is what they're going to sound like this is the vibe um i'm going to see if i can use that time to see if there's anything that the album is still missing you know yeah, yeah, if yeah, there yeah, is yeah. any like key ingredient that uh would make this better soup so <laughs> <laughs> um so i still also got kind of that bonus time 
yeah, yeah, but yeah. the deadlines are coming up very fast. So it's, it's yes. very much crunch time. It's very exciting. Now to talk about process and learning stuff, and you said like you learned so much about production and what have you, but you also learned a lot about building online community. And you said it yourself, um, you know, you started Patreon before everybody started Patreon in the last couple of years because of COVID. You started it before COVID. Nowadays, every band has some sort of Patreon or you know, trying to build their community via Discord and, and what have you. Um, ever thought of being a professional consultant to other artists on, you know, uh, showing them the ropes and how to do this. Because there's a lot of, you know, bands that don't have the name you have um, yeah. that are trying to survive in today's, you know, world of, of, of entertainment where going on tour means you have to take out a bank loan uh, that yeah. you may never be able to, to, to recover from. Um, a lot of people are struggling with that. Um, you have more experienced than most people. Uh, is that something that would excite you? Uh, I've always like I've uh, done a lot of uh, like panels and things like that in the last year where, where people ask me to, to talk about it. And um, whenever, you know, artists approach me with questions about it, I'm, I'm very excited to to share uh, to share the experience there. Um, it, I think what I'm doing and the way that I'm doing it is only um, it kind of only apply it doesn't apply to everyone you know uh, the fact that I already have an audience when starting of course you cannot if you want to start from zero with a patreon uh, that is that is that is very challenging I still think you can do it but it's not going to be the same you know so right. and if I start talking to them like oh you just do this it will be it would be um i would be blind to a certain privilege in that in that space right. uh and then also there's a lot of people who kind of do it next to things um as a way to maybe uh you know uh get like an extra stream of income or um and and i think something that was very um like the way that i've been doing it for the last uh well maybe everything except for the first few months is like it is really the heart the heart of the entire uh business mm -hmm. um like it uh everything everything grows from it uh like also the songs at this point um so yeah the the the, the Something that I often hear is like, oh, that sounds like a lot of work. And then I feel like, yeah, but this this is my work. And uh, um, right. uh, that has to really fit you. Like it has to be something that really, because I remember when I saw Amanda Palmer and the way that she was doing this, I was like, oh my God, I'm so inspired. This is amazing. And you know, the community and um, yeah, it it it's, I think you have to be very excited about it mostly yeah. um but um yeah uh i don't know if i could run a consultancy next to what i'm doing now but i'm very right. happy to help people with questions that that could be the short answer to your question <laughs> Uh, you collaborated with um, the Dark Side of the Moon for the uh, May It Be cover, uh, you know, a couple of years ago now. I, I re well, recently, a few months ago, I spoke to Melissa, um, yeah. and uh, and she shared with me that on record, <laughs> I'm not yeah. giving away any secrets, that she was extremely nervous to ride the horse in the movie clip. Um, and you were also on a horse there, and we know how much you are a lover of animals. Um, uh, I don't think I've seen many social media posts of you riding horses. So is that something that you had a lot of experience with or were you also very nervous? Uh, I wasn't like very nervous. I was very excited. Um, 
Um, I haven't. Uh, I, I I didn't do horse riding or something when I was a kid. I did have an uh, an aunt who had horses, and she had this one really friendly old big horse um, that uh, that we sometimes uh, kind of hobbled on. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but that that's about it. That's about it for me. Um, but I feel like this horse is also it, it, this was like a, a therapy horse, you know, yeah. the horse had a lot of experience with inexperienced riders. There you go. So, you go. Um, yeah, the horse was very kind uh, to all of us that day. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, I just because now I have the vision or not the vision, but the image of, of you and Melissa in your gowns riding these horses, it kind of reminds me of um, I actually my my favorite painting is a painting of Lady Godiva by John Collier. Mm -hmm. um, it was used once by Heaven Shall Burn uh, as a cover artwork for their Vito album. Um, yeah, look it up. There you go. Um, <laughs> by who again? Oh, by Collier. Yeah. John Collier. Yeah, Lady Godiva. I think it's it, it's my favorite uh, uh, painting. Oh, yeah. Because of yeah, the, I know the one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the balances between us, uh, a horse full of, um, it, you know, it's a proud horse, and it seems that the horse knows what the importance of what it's doing, and it's colorful and on there the fragile image of the of of, of Lady Godiva who's ashamed, who's ashamed or is trying to you know guard yeah. herself. Um, you also, I think, very much like uh, you know more classical art because we've seen you use that uh, for artwork for your songs of the month a few times. Um, like, do you like myself have like that's my favorite painting? That's my favorite painter. No, no, I have quite. I mean, I have uh, I have quite a few, um, but that's a good one. I don't think I have a favorite favorite painter i like like one that i like from a very young age was uh Mucha, uh like the art nouveau uh work um but like during my studies it was only like uh, there was only this much of my of my um lectures that were actually about that so i didn't really yeah. do a lot with that um uh the interest in in his painting specifically like i have done some of my um how do you call it your thesis i've done yep. one of my thesis on uh ensor a belgian yep. belgian painter uh who, who i who i really adore but i i don't think i would put his paintings up because they're very intense um but this is also like i appreciate some hey, Charlotte, painters if you if you have james ensor paintings that you yeah. can put up you don't need a patreon <laughs> exactly oh, prince let's call him prince yeah i'm just joking i'm just joking. um yeah um uh i mean one of my one of my favorite uh current uh painters definitely is chris berens um and he is a painter from amsterdam and he made the initial artwork for the soft revolution uh cover um i have uh several of his uh prints at home one of them being uh the one that we used for the soft revolution cover um but i, I yeah i would recommend anyone to look up uh chris Behrens. is absolutely incredible work he recently collaborated with um uh with a uh, writer <laughs> uh one of my favorite writers a dutch one uh thomas olderheuvel to make a special edition of his uh, bestseller uh called hex okay um which was also absolutely gorgeous beautiful book with illustrations and um so I would say of recent ones, but all through history, it would be very hard for me to uh, like. I also like the pre-Raphaelite uh, kind of painters, although it's often kind of tropey. Like uh, actually, the, the 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 example of the Lady Godiva, like it's always like the women always have to be so frail and so. Um, but yeah, it fits the it it fits the time and the place and the thing. Um, but aesthetically, aesthetically, uh, I, I do really like it. Well, I, I, I was not expecting 
to be chatting uh, with you about, you know, painters through history, but here we are. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll actually use it as a forced segue to get back to something else that you sure. mentioned in your Patreon relaunch announcement video is that, um, you know, because we've obviously seen you take some bold moves with something we mentioned African before. Yeah, that's a that's a song where you really went all in. The first time I got to talk to you, you were talking about this idea for a music video you had. The second time we got to talk, we could talk about it in detail. This this really you know short horror movie that you created, and then you you know you know brought that to life as well on your live shows, and your live shows were big production shows. Um, yeah. You mentioned in your relaunch Patreon a uh, Patreon relaunch video that you want to not just play some shows but you want to properly tour again yeah. that may or may not be always possible with a massive production and guests uh dancers and actors and and stars i can adjust the, the show to whatever we do it's, there you uh, go so yeah. what's um what's uh, what's on the wish list what uh, what can we keep our fingers crossed for um, I would love to do a, a European tour. I would love to do a US tour at one point as well again. Um, uh, I think, uh, oh, I, I don't know if I should, <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea whether I should share. I, I'm, I'm always afraid of jinxing it, you know? Uh, but I think that it, it would make sense to look at um, either a, a support or a good package just to, because I feel like we do have to, I feel like I have to reintroduce myself, you know, because this this album it's it's the first um, at least it's the first one of its kind under my own name. It's it's going to be different from uh, the Tales records, um, like. Um, I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tell you and then I'll tell you later to keep it on or off the record because I'm not sure but but as we're as we're talking I'll just mention it because it's a good example of it uh, but I talked to like this uh, marketing agency a while ago and they mainly do like heavy acts and um, uh, when I first uh, sent them an email they were like no I don't think I, th I don't think we're the right fit for you you know and and they based that on uh, the records that I put out now and then I was like can I just send you a link with some demos of the new work? And and I did. And they were like, oh, oh, okay, no, okay, you should have said that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, so I do really feel like, um, yeah, like I need to reintroduce myself. Uh, yeah. And it's probably, um, yeah, it, it would make sense to do that, you know, with a, a good match or package. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then to, yeah. Uh, but once again, I'm also since I don't have a tour booked yet, I really feel like it's jinxing it. So I might, <laughs> I might have to get back to this. But we'll, we'll see. Yeah. No worries, no worries. So that answers my question earlier about is the new album gonna be heavier? Yes or no? Um, it does. Yeah. <laughs> fights, we can keep our fingers crossed for tours in europe and hopefully you said the states or in america i hope that includes canada obviously yes. <laughs> um yeah. and uh and we've got the album that you're currently still working on so <sighs> when are we going to officially see the next new thing from you can you share anything about timelines at this point um good question i think so um well, the album is going to be okay. I'm just going to say what we're aiming for, and then we'll see what happens. There we're aiming go. to have we're we're aiming to have the record this fall, uh, and to have singles starting in spring, which is soon. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, usually that means that labels want to have something new out for all those festival um, uh, performances. Uh, should we keep our fingers crossed to see you this summer? uh yeah it's going to be like we're trying to do the first single in time to maybe but it's it's quite late you know uh, because yeah, yeah. festivals already have most slots booked but there is often there is some last minute things so so who knows uh i hope so i think i do think that uh the singles will get people psyched <laughs> there psyched we go about it. <laughs> good yeah, good watch me well, you know, shout out to 
Um, I've completely lost track on how long we've been talking, uh, but uh, I'm sure it's it's well over what you had time for. So I do appreciate that, especially when you are, as you say, in crunch time to finish this record. So I appreciate it so much. Um, I wish you all the best in finalizing this album and can't wait to see you on the stage, whether it's in Europe or in North America. Thank, Thank you, so, you much. so much. Watch me. You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.